and those are the kind of people I'd like to keep around. Like those are the, I don't know how many they would be, it doesn't matter, but those are the people that are important. That's why I just feel like email is one of the most important ways to stay engaged with those customers or your, your favorite customers, like even sending those people an email, just giving them an extra thanks, like, hey, I saw you, you know, um, you know, maybe you had this many visits this year, or I saw that you forwarded this email to this many people. I don't know if that's the thing, but you know, I just want to say thank you. And like, next time you come in for a haircut, here's 20% off. Welcome to Shitty Idea Time, creative business experiments uncut. Learn to stop censoring your big ideas with Tess Ball. Hello and happy Thursday. Welcome to another episode of Shitty Idea Time. I am your host, Tess Ball, the founder of the Heart Driven Business Academy and a business systems nerd who likes to talk shit and experiment. So today I'm bringing on Cindy Liu of Lucy's Digital. She is only a few months into business ownership, but has been in the digital marketing space for over a decade. Um, What I love about this conversation is the fact that sometimes we wait until we're like deemed a business expert in order to think of ourselves as an expert. Like we wait for somebody to hand us our title um, before we're willing to like step out and share our gifts with the world. And what I love about what Lucy did is while only being in business for a couple months, like she's kicking ass, rocking it and wants to share her gift. And so nothing delights me more than um, that like new budding flower and like spark of an idea. Like there's so much creativity in that phase. And it's something that I'm experiencing too right now. Um, Heart Driven is going through kind of this like rebirth, redefining phase. Um, And so oftentimes like when you're new and you're kind of just like throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, like it's like magic. Like we're all just like little toddlers exploring things for the first time and things just get really fucking good. I am just so happy to share this conversation where we talk about internal monologues and being an introvert versus being an extrovert. And we talk about the the great outdoors and of course, email marketing automation. So before I get into that, I want to share with you a bit of an announcement, a bit of a teaser as to what I've been up to, what my creative uh, shitstorm has been about. Um we are going to be launching the small business incubator over at Heart Driven, which is a, I'm I'm trying to like really flesh out the details right now. So I want to give it to you as I'm learning it. Uh, It'll be a six, six month to a year program where we do a deep dive into building business systems for either new business owners or those who are reinventing their business or going through an evolution. And so I'm really excited to um, get back into coaching getting back into this one-on-one concentrated or or small group, one-on-one or small group, concentrated work, concentrated play, concentrated experimentation. Um, And so I'm really, I'm really stoked to see what's going to happen with this and what it's going to turn into. So um, if you are evolving, if you are bringing your ideas to light, if you are moving forward in ways that are unknown, just just know I'm right there with you. Um, and I'm ex- excited to be experimenting alongside you. Um, so speaking of business experiments, let's just get on into it with Cindy Liu. So hello, Cindy. Thank you so much for being a part of the Shitty Idea Time podcast. I am so delighted that you are here. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you so much. (laughs) Would you please kick us off by introducing who you are, what you do, and why you do it? Um, Sure. So yeah, my name is Cindy. I launched uh, my business in April as um, like COVID hit and I got laid off from from my uh, tech job that I was at for a long time. And I just I decided it was kind of a blessing and cur- a blessing in disguise. I really just, I've always been wanting to work for myself and I've been super passionate about digital marketing for the last 10 years. I don't know. I just want to be, you know, someone there to help those in need uh, that are either starting a business or have a business um, and just don't have like the bandwidth or just need further education on um, their digital marketing needs. Um, email marketing is definitely my biggest service. Um, and email automation, and I'm super passionate about that. I love designing them, I love making them, I love building strategy for them, and I just think it's like one of the most 
best ways you can connect with like your customers. That's awesome. Yeah. When I saw, I think we connected in powerhouse women. Yeah. Yeah. You reached out to me. Yeah. When I saw your offerings, I was like, oh my God, I love that she's on the nerdy side of digital marketing. Um, <laughs> it like really spoke to my heart. The fact that you mentioned, especially all the automation, the systems-based approach. I was like, yes. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, I love nerding out. So this could be a fun talk. I could definitely go down a rabbit hole for a long time. So I'm really excited to talk about it. Awesome. So I would love to kind of dive into then maybe some of the top misconceptions about email marketing that you have come across. What are the top things that small business owners should really know as they get started in email marketing? Um, and like I, one of those misconceptions I think people have is that people think that email marketing or emails are dead and that people don't check them. But I feel like that's definitely the opposite. Um, so not dead. I think that 91% of people, I think are in an article just recently, and I don't know how authentic that statistic is, but it was like 91% of people or consumers are still opening emails. And I think at this time right now, if you're starting a business or you're a small business and you're trying to grow your audience, like email marketing is the most cost-effective way that you can connect with your people, engage. It's affordable and um, it's timely, it's real, and you can just be yourself. And I think people <clears throat> right now are opening them more than anything because everyone's at home. <laughs> yeah, I love the fact that you had mentioned that it's affordable. Um, so oftentimes people are like, I don't have a marketing budget, but I really need to sell XYZ product or I really need to generate revenue. Email doesn't mm. cost anything. Yeah, I mean, MailChimp offers free emails up to like, I don't know, two, 3,000 people. And if you're just getting started, unless you like have another way of getting a ton of customers or you come in from another business or pull, you know, clients, I don't think people realize how easy it is to, there's like how easy it is to really just you know increase your sales or just stay connected to people. I think I wrote down like nine things that email marketing does to benefit you and I can read them to you if you want. But yeah, um, okay. First of all, I am such a list person. So I definitely want to do the list reading thing for sure. But first I wanted to ask you because you mentioned MailChimp and that's a question that I see a lot of. It's like what's the best email platform to use? And I'm I'm personally a fan of MailChimp. Mm -hmm. Um but I wanted to hear from you, like, do you have a go-to? Are there pros and cons of different systems? I think it's really whatever you're comfortable with. <clears throat> you know, um, everyone has different preferences and like all my, I would say half of my clients use MailChimp and then some of my clients are using whatever marketing automation or email marketing comes with like their platform. I like MailChimp. I think it's easy to use. Like anyone can use it. They essentially build you a template. All you gotta do is drag stuff in there and just make your content. Like that's all you have to do. Your audience just really wants to hear what you have to say. And if you sound like a robot, people aren't going to read them. Yeah. I, I would love to now jump into this list that you like, let's make my heart so happy. And I have a <laughs> feeling that a lot of the listeners, um, might also be list people. So yeah, let's, let's go for it. Yeah, I'm definitely a list person. It's either on a sticky note on my wall or it's on a bulletin board on a sticky note or I have like eight notepads of just <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Old school. But um, yeah, I, I wrote down, so I think like, I think there's nine um, different ways that marketing, email marketing is essential. And the first one was that it increases your sales. There's engagement. It's easy to measure. Connection. It's affordable. I think I said that already, but brand, it's a good brand builder. Um, has good, tar you know, you can target measure your, your audience, man, I can't talk today. <laughs> Saying it too fast. I'm so excited. Um, it's timely. So like, you know, those automations that you want to send out me personal, like birthday emails. So those are nice because those are timely. Right. And then you have your, they're all real time. You schedule them when you want on the day you want, and it's going to send to those customers on their time zone. At least it doesn't MailChimp from what I understand. Yeah. 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 And then the biggest one is that everyone uses it. So I mean, those are the best ones I can come up with like right before we met today. <laughs> <laughs> right on. One thing that you mentioned is that it's easy to measure. I think that so many small business owners get overwhelmed at this idea of, 
I need to measure my Instagram engagement and then I need to measure my click through rate and then maybe my, uh, my open rate. And like, they get confused by the amount of options. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to like measuring their digital marketing. So what, in your opinion, is like a good way to start measuring the effectiveness of either email or really any of your digital marketing efforts? Um, if you are like just starting out, you know, and you're kind of, you have a platform that you show up on the most, say like you use Instagram a lot and you are also using MailChimp a lot. Like those audiences are going to be so different. You can drive people from Instagram to sign up, um, but you're not going to have the same audience. So I think measuring them separately as like maybe a sole proprietor is, is much less stressful to just do it on each platform. Because if you try and do Google analytics and you have your, met, your, your metrics and from like MailChimp and you have your metrics from Instagram and you're trying to analyze all this data on Google, it's way more work to set up on Google than it is to just log in. And what I love about MailChimp, I know I'm kind of backtracking is that it tells you how, like with the percentage of people that are opening or the percentage of people that aren't really engaging. So you can pretty much click and create those segment lists to kind of do it for you. So it's, it's, a, it's, that's another reason why I think it's a great tool, but, um, I personally have a Google analytics account and I don't use it because I don't feel like I need to measure that many of my platforms yet. I think that it's just good to stick with a couple so you don't overwhelm yourself and then start from there until like you maybe can't handle it or you have a ridiculous audience that you need help. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, I, I think simple is usually the answer to like everything. <laughs> we want to make it so complicated um, and really simplifying it's simple. it. Less is more. That's awesome. So speaking of not simple um, at all, I hear you are an introverted extrovert. <laughs> Conversations with yourself in your head. And I freaking love that. Um, so what is your internal monologue like? I would love to hear more about that. I was, uh, I've been thinking about it, you know, for, for the last couple of days because it just keeps coming up in conversation with different people. And I even asked my dad about it this morning. I was like, dad, do you have like an internal monologue? He's like, what does that mean? I'm like, do you talk to yourself? He goes, like, it, like out loud I'm like well, you know I mean usually it's in your head you know it's just some a way for you like do you try and make sense in your own head that to like think about things like oh don't forget to bring your coffee to the kitchen he goes no like, how are you my dad <laughs> that is but so I, funny it's so funny and I read yesterday that people who have like hearing impaired have internal monologues that like involve signing and some people see images instead of like talking to themselves, which I find really? fascinating. I am so curious right now. I think we'll have to do some kind of a poll to determine how many, like who has an internal monologue? Like if you are a listener of the podcast and you have a, a strong internal dialogue with yourself, um, I'll have to figure out a way for you to let me know because I am just so curious as to like what percentage of entrepreneurs right have an internal monologue I, and i'm wondering like is it more of like a creative like people that think on what i don't know the the whole i don't know how the brain works in the sense of like people do the science like well if you're a left side thinker then you're this way or like you know i'm a a b c person i'm not really into that kind of stuff but i wonder if like you know more people that are on the creative end tend to just like talk to themselves a little bit more and then maybe people that aren't you know, just do things. They don't even think about, they like, don't even think about it. They just do it. I don't know. Well, that's so <laughs> weird. I feel like if I did not have an internal monologue, I would be so lonely. Like I keep myself company hardcore. Yeah. Unless like I talk to my dog I and mean, she's not much helps, but she's a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> what common themes show up in your internal dialogue? Um, like, it's usually to remind myself that when I'm walking to the kitchen to like not forget to fill your water and then I get to the kitchen I'm like you you idiot you forgot your glass of water now you have to go back and it's like did I really just say that to myself yeah I did <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wondering if other people have the same thoughts that's awesome what kind of dog do you have um she's kind of a mutt 
I, I, I'm just like, would love to do one of those doggy DNA tests, but at the same time, I kind of like the mystery of her, but she, she's like a chihuahua. She kind of looks like a Sheltie Corgi. I don't know. Oh my gosh. What's her name? Furry little animal. Her name's Bella. Oh, cool. We'll say hi to Bella. Yeah. For us all at Shitty Idea Time. Um, so when you are not either mastering email marketing or talking to yourself about the water in the kitchen, um, I hear you have a huge passion for the outdoors. <laughs> I do. I I think I was like the black sheep of my family because even when I was a kid, I was like, I want to have a camping party for my birthday. And they're like, what? Like, yeah, I want to have a tent. I want to camp. So I love, I love doing all that stuff. I never found, and I was a Girl Scout and I thought Girl Scouts was such a waste of time. So I was like, I don't want to sell cookies. I want to like learn how to cut trees down or like save trees. Like this is not helping. But uh, yeah, I love camping and I love hiking. It's definitely my favorite hobby. Um, I think I hiked like over 700 miles last year or the year before. Oh, wow. Just every day, like a couple miles a day, sometimes four or five miles a day. I don't know. It just added up. It was insane. That's awesome. Um, and where are you locating? Um, I live in Mesa, Arizona. Okay, cool. I'm guessing there is plenty of desert hiking out there. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's definitely a lot to do here. I think people underestimate like Arizona, they just think it's like this hot desert and there's nothing to do here, but we're surrounded by mountains. And if mm. you want waterfalls, you just got to drive a little north. That's really cool. Do you have like a favorite hike or like a favorite moment outside? Uh, I mean, moments are tough because it, just, it really depends on like your company. Um, I love trying to get other people to hike. I've I uh, was a part of a hiking group for a while where we inspired women to like opt outside and conquer fears or just, you know, make new friends or if there was something that they were internally struggling with and they just didn't want to do anything alone. Like we, you know, basically got them out there and some conquered fear of heights. I had no idea that they were scared of heights. And I was like, so cool because I like helped them do that. And now they're just like huge hikers. Um, so I guess that's like kind of a really good moment. Um, but I don't know. I usually just drag one of my friends and I'm like, get in the car. We're going to see where the wind takes us. I don't know if there's, we'll lose GPS, but we'll figure it out. It's fine. <laughs> I love that so much. And you, you just touched on fear. One thing that I thought was absolutely hilarious about your pre-interview questions, um, to the question, what scares you most about being a business owner? You replied. I forgot what I wrote. What the fuck am I even doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't. <laughs> that is so gold. I love, like, there's not a person listening that's not like, oh, yeah, something. What the fuck am I even doing? <laughs> Good. I'm so glad I'm not alone. <laughs> not alone at all. Um, how does that show up for you? Like, <sighs> um, I mean, sometimes I wake up and I just. I sit down, I'm doing, I'll be a hundred percent committed to what I'm working on, like tunnel vision and I'll be on a roll and then I'm done. I'm like, what did I just do? Did I do that right? Like, is this gonna, you know, is this something I can keep doing? And I just feel like I just have to keep showing up and doing it because I've already made it this far. I've already invested a lot of my time and my quarantine money to see where it goes and it's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I think that's, especially in this, the startup phase, so much of business is exploring that mystery. Mm. And like, whether it's, you know, asking the question hilariously or asking it in earnest, but like, what am I doing? What am I pursuing? Where is this going to take me? Because so much of small business ownership is unknown. Like you can't know it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So is there anything you're pursuing now that's a little bit new or unknown? I know like you just started in April. And so I got to imagine like damn near everything is unknown. Um, but like yeah. what's on your plate? Um, I, I feel like there's a lot. I'm constantly trying to educate myself. I think I bought like 200 classes to take, which I'm like, do I even have time for that? Cause I'm so busy working on my four customers and their emails. I feel like sometimes I don't have enough time during the day. And sometimes at the end of the day, I just like, don't 
want to learn, but I know I have to. Things are constantly changing and you constantly have to pivot the way that you're helping other people pivot their business. Like it's, it's kind of overwhelming, but it's kind of fascinating at the same time. That's really know. cool. So I feel like, yeah, I'm just trying to learn, um, still trying to build my own business on the side too. Like always trying to make it better, make it more, you know, clear about what I want to offer. And as I've helped new customers, I'm also learning things I don't want to do or things I do want to do. So, or, that maybe I want to learn because I want to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that idea of like working on projects or working, even if it's a corporate job, but like doing that project because of what you know you'll learn and like entering into those client relationships, not just like, okay, how can I serve? How can I help? Like, but also what can I learn? What can I gain from this experience? Even if it's just like that little nugget. It's, it's, it's so liberating. I don't know. It's like, oh, I learned how to, I don't know, type in all these keywords. And that's a really bad example. But um, <laughs> <laughs> just like the little things, you know, that you're constantly doing to better yourself so that you can better serve. And it feels good to do it. And that's I like doing it. Awesome. So we have come to the point of the show where we're going to play a little game of would you rather. We've gotten to know you, some of your personality traits. And so uh, we're, we're going to play our little game. So your would you rather is this. You are establishing this new business and the name of the business is what the fuck am I even doing? <laughs> um, that is the name of your new business because one, I think that's hilarious. And two, so very relatable for the following scenarios. Would you rather this business teach outdoor survival and camping skills? Or, cause I mean, that's a total, like what the fuck am I even doing scenario, right? Like you can't yeah. sleep in a tent. I'm going to make a fire. What is this? Or I hear you're pretty handy. So would you rather create an online education platform helping people fix small stuff around the house? Because again, what the fuck is like a light switch? Or, you know, how do how how the fuck do I put up a shelf? YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I built my desk. I like watch a YouTube video and my sister has all the tools. I'm like, let's make this today and then see how it turns out. <laughs> Awesome. So would you rather start a business teaching the outdoor survival skills or would you rather start a business teaching handyman skills or handy woman or handy person skills? Um, I probably would probably go for outdoor stuff. I feel a lot more confident in that because I have a lot more experience being outside than you know, being a, a side carpenter or whatever you call That's it. That's awesome. I had no idea it, before the interview that you actually did this. So as you were describing this, I was like, I know exactly what she's going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's explore how we could actually create this business um, and what might go into the digital marketing side. So if, well, since you, Cindy, are creating, what the fuck am I even doing? Outdoor survival school. <laughs> What are your go-to steps for setting up a marketing system? Um, how would you begin the process of building this product? Oh, I would, before email, I guess I would probably start engaging, obviously probably through Instagram. It's my favorite place to be. And, you know, gathering information based on what people are interested in learning about and then getting them to sign up for, my email marketing so that I can email them information on how they can either take a class where I can show them how to pack like a backpack, which I know seems really silly, but there's a science to it. Um, or like making a fire or how to use one of those little fire boiler things so you can eat. That I know seems really simple, but when I went camping last time with like eight people and only two of us knew how to do it, it got really tiring. So um, anyways, um, I think that's kind of how I would go, go from that because I think if you have an audience that's interested in the information that you want to provide, you can give out that information based on what, you know, they're willing to learn or sign up for. And I think the video portion of it or whether it's a YouTube video or a class that they want to sign up for is always helpful because I, I, me personally, I'm more of a visual learner. So if I can see what they're doing, 
then I can replicate that. That's awesome. I think so many people are scared to start the process because they're like, I don't have my products yet. And I think just getting out there, asking people what they want to learn about, getting their email addresses so that once you understand what you're doing, you can then deliver them the content. You already have an audience. Mm -hmm. Um, in like a really low pressure way. Yeah. Um, Building that audience is, is going to be, it may take time. I, you know, obviously you have to get enough emails out there. You don't want to just send like five, but Hey, you might start with five. And then those one or two of those people might be like, Hey, you need to sign up for this because we're going to have a soup pie and you don't know how to pack shit. So you need to watch <laughs> the video. <laughs> That's awesome. So if you were to be setting up this email, like sequence, would you like, there are a lot of places out there that say you need to have a welcome flow or you need to um, send out a weekly newsletter. Like how would you structure the delivery for this company? Um, I think welcome emails are, are actually a really great way to initiate or introduce yourself, especially if people fill out like the form, you know, you get to thank them. You're grateful that they've decided to um, be interested in the information that you're so passionate about. So it's, I think that the welcome emails are great and you can even use those as like an automation. Like those people sign up, you automatically send them the welcome email. Hey, thanks. I'm so excited you're here. And then, you know, continue to just um, feed them information, you know, based on the things that they're interested in. And I, I think it just depends on the way you want to set it up. So like some people, you know, like to send the next email based on an action or some people like to send an email based on um, what they might click on within the email. And so that kind of helps you, you know, weed out irrelevant emails to those. And that I think also, I'm going, to just, I'm going on a rabbit hill now where I'm like, when those people won't unsubscribe and you'll keep the ones that are engaged because they, you know, you're talking to them and they feel special or important. <laughs> well, it makes sense. Like if you send a thank you email and you have a couple options, like, are you interested in like backpacking stuff or hiking stuff or like camp cooking? Like if people click on those specific things and then they're delivered information based on like that topic, that topic, of course they'll stick around longer because they feel so seen and like, oh my God, you, you know me. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that's a good plan. Maybe I should pivot my business. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need you in email marketing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so how would you then like over time, add on to your marketing strategy. So you have like an Instagram account, a survey, email. Um, what would be next? Like what's your like next step in either developing the product or developing the marketing? If you've got a pretty consistent audience and they're staying engaged, um, there's always little things that you can do to constantly grow. I think like um, there's contests you can do through email. It's, is that what you mean? Yeah. So maybe some contests. Um, I would say any sort of promotion. People like to see free things, even though it doesn't have to, you know, always be free, but people kind of like to have a discount or referral programs are great because if you get five people to sign up, then you will get like this, you know, shimmy, chammy towel or something the next time you bring <laughs> five people for business. Um, so I think there's lots of ways to get people engaged and also through social media. I think that's always, there's always ads. I, I just, I don't think that I've ever been a person to want to buy ads because I feel like there's always another way to do it organically. Yeah. Um, ads are good, but. Well, and I think ads are great, especially, and correct me if I'm wrong, but ads are wonderful. Like once you have like everything else dialed in. Like mm -hmm. your website's converting, your email's converting, your referral program's like off the charts. Okay, like, so maybe you add in some ads. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't tend to start there either. Yeah. I've just, I've, <clears throat> I haven't had a, really any disappointments with just the email marketing customers that I've had. Like everyone's gotten back their ROI within like the first month, at least a couple of them have. So at, at at least three times the amount that they're charging them. So I feel like it's working and they're not, you know, 
using any ads, they're simply sending out emails with like a, you know, 20% discount and, you know, um, just kind of throwing that out there on Instagram too. Like, Hey, sign up for these emails, get 20% off. Like it's so easy. Yeah. And one thing that I like about that too, is it's sustainable growth. It isn't that like growth that we're all scared of. Like, what if I grow too fast and don't have systems in place to handle it? What if I don't, what if I like grow beyond my capacity? Mm -hmm. So it seems like really sustainable over time. Yeah. I don't know if I'll ever hit that, but that'd be a really cool goal. Be like, I can't handle this anymore. I need an assistant. Like, no. <laughs> It'll be on your level. <laughs> no, we are. Um, so you had mentioned referral programs. Is there a way that you've seen that set up really simply? Or if somebody is like intimidated, like there are a ton of different online platforms to use. And like, how do I set this up? Where would you direct them? Uh, I would probably first ask them like which platform they're using because um, if they're having, <clears throat> if they're offering a product or if they're offering a service, <clears throat> sometimes their their SaaS platform will already offer like a program that will let them do that. All you got to do is just fill everything in. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But if they're basic like me or just a small sole provider, um, I think that. I mean, do it through email, you can do it through social media, you can use, you know, keywords or like promo codes to kind of get people to be like, hey, reply to this email or send this email to five people. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't gone that far into like MailChimp on how to figure that one out. That'd be kind of fun to do because I haven't had anyone do that yet, but pretty sure you could get creative on ways to do that. That's what I love too is you're like, do this or that or this, or you could... <laughs> And like, I think that's also just this rad skill as a business owner. Like sometimes it really is just like, okay, what do I have available to me? And what can I try next? Thank you for me, for reassuring that. I, Cause that's what my internal <laughs> monologue would sound like. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> um, so if there are folks who are listening that are like, on the edge of starting a business, like you recently took that leap. What advice, if they're just like, I'm not sure if it's the right time, I'm not sure if it's the right thing, and they're kind of like in that internal monologuing mode, what so, advice would you give them? Um, I mean, from what I've learned in the community of where we met, like, it does take a lot of courage to like be in a place, I think, where you, you're, you're taking this big leap to do something on your own. Like it's, it's definitely scary and you just have to do it and know that like, I feel like what the fuck am I doing every day, but at the same time, you just the more practice and I feel like the more you show up, the better it is and it's okay to suck because you're only going to get better by the experiences that you gain and at first I started doing a lot of free services just to get the experience. Like, hey, I'll help you for free. I'll give you a month of free emails. Just let me show you what I can do in practice. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, start somewhere. Building value, building trust, and like just building relations with people and just having support is definitely helpful. Um, and just, you know, telling yourself every day that you just, I don't know, just got to do it. You got to be ready for it. You, you know, I know it's kind of, that's easier said than done. I don't, I don't know if I was hundred percent ready, but I had already kind of started building, you know, this little side business of freelancing last year. And it kind of fell off because I got really busy. I was working in sales and I was selling software and that just kind of, you know, ended. But in that little time that I had, I still, just had so many different ideas of learning from people that I talked to every day that struggled with things that I know I could help them do. Not at my job, but at home I can. So that's, that's really awesome. super awesome. Just need to find them again. <laughs> cool. So say the, what the fuck am I even doing camping school just takes off. You have crazy success. People are like on mega wait lists uh, to try to find it for your classes you're like launching new things left and right to keep up with the demand. 
what does success look like for you? Like, how do you celebrate that? Honestly, I mean, I was just having this conversation with someone the other day because and I, I'll get to the answer, but like he kind of talked about the same thing that we're talking about right now about, you know, kind of leveling up your life to either like better yourself in any aspect. So whether it's like replacing like a TV stand in your living room or, you know, propagating a bunch of plants. So you feel like, you know, you have more, you know, things to look at when you're home. I don't know. Little things like that, I guess for me would be a celebration because I spent a lot of time at home. I love being home. Um, especially since there's not a lot to do. I've been working on making my home a better home. It's my sanctuary and I want to enjoy it. So that's, that's how I would celebrate it, I guess, because that's the only thing I think I would want to do. <laughs> Maybe go hike somewhere fun if it wasn't so hot. <laughs> that's awesome. Just I don't like, really know if it counts. Yeah. <laughs> it totally counts. Um, and that's what I love too. Every, I think looking at entrepreneurship on Instagram, like a celebration does not have to be a trip to Belize. And I think so many, especially new business owners, like I would love for, I'm just going to propagate a plant because it feels good to my soul. Yeah. Like that is enough. Like that's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So guys, if anyone needs any help propagating plants, go to YouTube or just ask me. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> YouTube is definitely a, Definitely super helpful. Good resource for sure. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, not every one of our small business pursuits always pans out the way we think it's going to. Um, and this may or may not be true for the what the fuck am I even doing camping school. Um, so say you've tried for about a year to produce this valuable content, get people on board. And people are like, nah, I'm just not feeling it. How do you think about or approach quote unquote failure? Um, I mean, you're always gonna get those people that are gonna drop off or lose interest, which you have, I think, maybe two options and, um, one of them is to pivot like those specific type of people into a different group where you try and re-engage them or spark an interest that might, you know, reignite some motivation to keep them going or um, you just let them go. Not everyone's gonna want to, you know, stay in your little circle and that's okay. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a, also this like myth that we have to grow and get big. And sometimes like having a small circle of really tight customers and clients, like as long as it's sustainable and you're making what you need to, like sometimes it's really enough. Yeah. And I feel like the people that are, the people that you engage with the most, which you can check on MailChimp, um, you can see how many times they open your email, but you know, those ones are the ones that are going to be there for you. Those are the people that you want to like make feel important because those are the ones that are most likely going to pretty much promote your business or recommend you. And, the, and those are the kind of people I'd like to keep around. Like those are the, I don't know how many they would be. It doesn't matter, but those are the people that are important. That's why I, I just feel like email is one of the most important ways to stay engaged with those customers or your, your favorite customers, like even sending those people an email, just giving them an extra thanks. Like, Hey, I saw you, you know, um, you know, maybe you had this many visits this year, or I saw that you forwarded this email to this many people. I don't know if that's the thing, but you know, I just want to say thank you. And like, next time you come in for a haircut, here's 20% off. You yeah. Know, just like that's an extra awesome. thing. <laughs> So cool. I, thanks. Well, if people want to link up with you, if they're like, yeah, my email is a hot mess and I need help or they're confused by it or they just want some support in getting their system set up, how can people reach out to you? Um, they can find me on Instagram or they can find me on my website, which would be great because I think I have like two subscribers right now. <laughs> And I'd love to start, you know, doing my own emails, but um, 
I think the only subscribers are myself and my sister. So um, just trying. If you are listening right now, <laughs> your task is to go and subscribe. The link will be in the show notes um, because we would love to support you. And I want to see you grow and thrive and like get to help other small business owners because I fully believe that when more small business owners succeed, the world will legit be better place. So thank you for helping. Yeah, we need, we need people like that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Uh, this has been so much fun. Like I've been looking forward to this all week. Cause, uh, clearly it seems like we both had a really crazy week so far. So it's yeah. been really great. This has definitely been a highlight. I really appreciate your time and your expertise and your wisdom and your energy. Like this was so delightful. Thank you all so much for listening. Before you go, I have a quick request. Um, you know what it is. Please subscribe. Please share with a friend. Please leave a review. They help so much. It's, it turns out it's a lot of fucking work to make a podcast. Um, I don't know why I'm only realizing this like 22 episodes into it, but it's a lot of work. And so um, if you could leave me some little love notes in the review section, that would really keep my spirits high. Um, I would love it. And um, it would help me produce better content. Like if I know what y'all are looking for, I can better serve. So um, hit me up in the reviews, share this with a friend. Um, I'm so excited to see the, like the little, the little chart move upward. Um, I'm such a like spreadsheet numbers nerd. And so as the numbers grow, that just, it just makes my soul so happy. So anyway, if you could do that for me, that would be a huge, huge blessing. Um, and I'll see you next week for another episode of this grand business experiment. Bye.